Welcome to the HFY Tales channel. Remember to like and subscribe if you like the story. Enjoy and take care. The galaxy was not what it used to be. The Thalvarian sovereignty, once a beacon of technological prowess and cultural sophistication, now lay in ruins. Sylvanis Prime, a remote outpost colony on the edge of the galaxy, epitomized that decay. The wind howled across desolate plains, whipping through the broken remnants of once proud towers, now crumbling under centuries of neglect and the recent collapse of the Thalvarian regime. Ethan Hayes adjusted the straps of his pack as he stepped out of his battered ship, the Wayfarer. The human had seen better days, a former soldier and now an engineer for hire. Ethan roamed the stars looking for meaning in a galaxy that had rejected humanity until Earth's resilience became impossible to ignore. He took in the bleak surroundings, the eerie quiet only punctuated by the faint whine of machinery deep beneath the surface. This planet was his last stop before moving deeper into uncharted space. His intention was simple, scavenge for tech, refuel, and leave. He had no interest in the skeletons of empires. The silence broke as a shadow moved across the dusty landscape. Help me, came a voice raspy and tinged with desperation. Ethan turned, hand instinctively hovering near his plasma pistol. Emerging from behind a half-collapsed pillar, was a figure shrouded in a tattered cloak. As she stepped closer, the light revealed her distinctly alien features. Pale violet skin, high cheekbones, and elongated eyes that glimmered faintly in the dim light. A regal crest adorned her brow, though it was tarnished and cracked. You're human, she said, her voice trembling but resolute. Thank the stars. Ethan's grip on his weapon didn't relax. And you're Thalvarian he replied, which makes us unlikely allies. I have no one else, the alien woman said, stepping closer. I am Princess Liara Thalva's last of my line. I am hunted, starving, and desperate. I need your help. Her gaze bore into his. Ethan had encountered Thalvarians before during Earth's first contact war. They had been dismissive and cold, nothing like the pleading, vulnerable figure before him. He hesitated. Liara dropped to her knees. Marry me, she said. It is the only way to save me. The absurdity of her words hung in the air. Ethan blinked. You what? Marriage, she repeated, her voice stronger now. It is more than a bond in my culture. It is a sacred union of trust and protection. As my husband, you would be bound by our customs to safeguard me. Please, I have no one else. Ethan stared at her uncertain whether to laugh or walk away. But there was no mistaking the sincerity in her voice or the despair in her eyes. Behind them, faint sounds echoed from the distance. A low hum grew louder, followed by sharp, metallic clinks. Bounty hunters. Ethan sighed and extended his hand. Let's get off this rock first. We'll figure out the rest later. Liara grasped his hand, her touch surprisingly warm. Thank you, she whispered. As the two rushed toward the Wayfarer, the first shots from their pursuers rang out, and Ethan realized his quiet life was about to take a very complicated turn. The Wayfarer was not built for royalty. Ethan's cramped ship groaned under the strain as it took off from Sylvanis Prime, its thrusters fighting against gravity and years of wear. Inside the cabin, Princess Liara sat in the co-pilot's seat, her tattered cloak tucked tightly around her as if to shield herself from more than the cold. Ethan glanced at her, between adjusting the ship's controls. So, care to explain what exactly you meant by marry me? Because that's not a phrase I expected to hear today. Liara's eyes, still shimmering faintly, met his. In Thalvarian culture, marriage is not just ceremonial. It creates a psychic bond, an anchor of trust and loyalty between two beings. It is the only way I can ensure my survival. Ethan scoffed. Psychic bonds? Trust. You just met me. And yet, you're the first being in months who didn't try to kill me on sight. She countered. That is more trust than I've placed in anyone since the fall of my people. Her words were biting, but her voice faltered, betraying the vulnerability she tried to mask. Ethan exhaled heavily. I get that you're desperate, but this sounds like a long-term commitment for what might be a short-term problem. 
It is a short-term problem, Liara said, her tone sharp now. If you reject me, I'll be dead within the week. Ethan didn't respond right away. He turned his focus to the navigation console, setting a course away from Sylvani's Prime. The bounty hunters would track their departure, but the galaxy was vast, and Ethan knew a few tricks for staying hidden. Liara broke the silence. The bounty on my head isn't just because I'm royalty. My people's enemies believe I hold the key to advanced Alvarian technology. If they capture me, they will strip my mind for it. I need someone who can protect me, not just physically, but through the bond. Ethan leaned back in his chair. You're really serious about this psychic bond thing, huh? Liara nodded. Without it, I cannot fully trust you, and you cannot fully trust me. That's comforting. Ethan muttered. And what happens if I say no? Liara's hands clenched the fabric of her cloak. Then I will leave. But you should know, the Falvarian bond also amplifies cooperation and intuition. It will make us stronger together. Sounds invasive, Ethan said. It's mutual, Liara insisted. You would gain insight into my mind as much as I would yours. Ethan studied her for a long moment. There was no mistaking the desperation in her voice. But there was something else there, too. A flicker of pride. Of determination. She wasn't just begging for survival. She was fighting for it in her own way. The ship rocked slightly as it entered hyperspace. The hum of the engines filling the cabin. Ethan ran a hand through his hair and sighed. Okay, let's say I agree. What exactly does this bond entail? Liara hesitated. And for the first time, her confidence seemed to waver. There is a ceremony, a simple one, given our circumstances. It requires physical proximity and intent. Intent, Ethan repeated flatly. You mean we have to mean it? Yes, Liara said, and you must trust me. Ethan leaned back in his seat, staring at the ceiling. He had faced alien invasions, interstellar battles, and countless brushes with death. But this, this was a whole new kind of risk. Finally, he nodded. Let's survive the next 24 hours first. Then we'll talk about your ceremony. Deal. Liara's shoulders relaxed slightly, though her expression remained guarded. Deal. The Wayfarer cruised through hyperspace, its old engines humming steadily. Inside, Ethan and Liara sat in the cramped galley area. The tension between them was palpable, a mix of exhaustion, weariness, and the unspoken weight of Liara's proposal. Ethan reached for a ration bar from a compartment. Human delicacy, he said, tossing one toward Liara. Gourmet dining on a budget. Liara caught it but didn't immediately open it. She studied the packaging, her expression a mix of curiosity and disdain. You eat. Processed bricks? Ethan shrugged. They've got protein, carbs, and a decent shelf life. What more do you need? Liara peeled the wrapper hesitantly and took a cautious bite. Her face scrunched as she swallowed. This tastes like despair. Ethan chuckled. Yeah, well, despair is all we've got at this altitude. Liara set the bar down and leaned back in her chair. My people would consider this an insult to the very concept of sustenance. Food is meant to nourish both the body and the spirit. Well, princess, Ethan said, leaning forward. Out here, survival beats spirit every time. The title princess wasn't meant as a compliment, and Liara's sharp glare showed she recognized the jab. But instead of lashing out, she exhaled and softened her tone. Ethan, I do not expect you to understand my culture, but if we are to survive together, I need you to try. Ethan raised an eyebrow. You mean like how you're trying to understand my... Her silence was answer enough. The tension lingered as they finished their meal in awkward quiet. Eventually, Liara spoke again, her voice lower, more thoughtful. In Thalvarian society, marriage is sacred because it represents unity. Two minds working in perfect harmony. It is not just romantic. It is strategic, philosophical, even spiritual. Without it, we are incomplete. That's a lot to put on one relationship, Ethan said. It is, Liara admitted, but it is also what has allowed my people to endure for centuries. And now, 
I am asking you to help me carry that legacy. Ethan leaned back, crossing his arms. You know, humans are big on psychic bonds. We prefer our privacy. Liara tilted her head, her gaze piercing. And yet, you have the capacity for connection that my people envy. I've seen humans fight and die for one another, even without telepathy. That is a strength I admire. Ethan's expression softened, but only slightly. Flattery's nice. But it's not going to make me forget how crazy this whole thing sounds. Liara stood, pacing the narrow confines of the galley. I'm not asking for forever. I'm asking for survival for both of us. The bond will make us stronger. We will sense each other's intentions, react faster, fight better. Fight better, huh? Ethan said, smirking. You really know how to sweet-talk a guy. Liara stopped and turned to face him. Ethan, I am not trying to manipulate you. If there were any other way, I would not ask this of you. But you must understand, I have nothing left. No family, no allies, no home. Only this. Her voice cracked on the last word, and Ethan could see the tears she fought to hold back. For a moment, her royal facade slipped, revealing the terrified woman underneath. It hit him harder than he expected. Ethan sighed, running a hand through his hair. Look, I don't know if I'm ready for this bond thing, but I'll give you this. I'm not going to let anyone hurt you while you're under my watch. Liara nodded slowly. That is all I ask. But even as she said the words, Ethan couldn't shake the feeling that she wanted much more than his protection. And somewhere deep down, he wondered if he could give it to her. The hum of the wayfarer's engines filled the silence as Ethan worked on calibrating the ship's sensors. Liara had retreated to the cockpit, staring out at the swirling hyperspace tunnel. Despite her outward calm, Ethan could sense the tension radiating from her. You keep pacing, Ethan called out without looking up from his work. You're going to wear a hole in my deck. Liara stopped mid-step, turning toward him. The bounty hunters won't stop. They never do. Ethan glanced up, his eyes narrowing. You said your people are telepathic. Can't you? I don't know. Read their minds and predict their next move. Liara shook her head, her regal composure faltering. Our telepathy has limits. Without a bond. I can only sense fragmented emotions, and even that drains me. Well, guess we'll have to rely on good old-fashioned human ingenuity, Ethan said, gesturing to the console. I've rigged a decoy beacon. If they're tracking us, it'll lead them in the wrong direction. Liara raised an eyebrow. You seem confident. Confidence keeps me alive, Ethan replied with a smirk. That and a knack for fixing things that shouldn't work anymore. Before Liara could respond, the console beeped urgently. Ethan's smirk faded as he leaned over to check the display. Proximity alert. Something's closing in. Liara tensed. Bounty hunters. Most likely, Ethan muttered, his fingers flying over the controls. They're fast. Must have gotten a lock before we jumped. Hold on. The ship shuddered violently as an explosion rocked the hull. Red lights flared and alarms blared through the cabin. They've disabled our shield, Liara shouted. Ethan gritted his teeth. Guess it's plan B. Grab a weapon and follow me. The ship's narrow corridors became a battlefield as bounty hunters breached the airlock. Ethan and Liara positioned themselves near the engine room, where Ethan had rigged several improvised traps. The first bounty hunter threw the hatch triggered a tripwire, setting off a flashbang that disoriented the rest. Nice trick. Liara said, her voice tight as she raised a plasma pistol Ethan had handed her. Don't thank me yet, Ethan replied, taking aim at the advancing mercenaries. Just keep them off the engines. Blaster fire erupted, the confined space amplifying the sound. Liara stayed close to Ethan, her movements precise but unpracticed. She fired cautiously, each shot deliberate. Ethan, meanwhile, moved like a soldier his aim quick and deadly. They're flanking us, Liara warned, sensing the shift in their attacker's intentions before Ethan did. Damn telepathy might come in handy after all, Ethan said, adjusting his position. He threw a small explosive down the corridor, forcing the bounty hunters to retreat momentarily. As the fight dragged on, 
Liara's breathing grew labored. Ethan noticed the strain on her face and cursed under his breath. You're not used to this, are you? I am. Not a soldier, she admitted, her voice trembling. I was trained to lead, not fight. Well, you're fighting now, Ethan said, firing another shot. And you're doing fine. Just don't stop. Another wave of mercenaries surged forward, this time equipped with shields. Ethan's trap slowed them down, but it wasn't enough. One of the bounty hunters got too close, and Liara hesitated, frozen by the sight of the towering figure bearing down on her. Liara! Ethan shouted. The shout snapped her out of her paralysis. Acting on instinct, she raised her hand and unleashed a psychic pulse. The bounty hunter stumbled, clutching his head as the pulse disoriented him. Nice move, Ethan said, covering her as she regained her composure. Think you can do that again? Liara nodded, her confidence returning. Together, they pushed back the remaining attackers, their coordination improving with each exchange. The bond between them wasn't fully formed, but in those moments, it felt like something more than coincidence guided their actions. The final bounty hunter fell, leaving the ship in a tense silence, broken only by the crackle of damaged systems. Ethan lowered his weapon, breathing heavily. Well, that was fun. Liara slumped against the wall, her exhaustion clear. I thought you said we had a plan. That was the plan, Ethan said with a grin. Improvisation. Liara shook her head but managed a faint smile. You're reckless. And you're still alive. Ethan shot back, offering her a hand to stand. Let's get this ship patched up before they send reinforcements. As they moved to assess the damage, Ethan couldn't help but glance at Liara. Despite her exhaustion, there was a newfound fire in her eyes. She wasn't just a princess anymore. She was a survivor. And for the first time, Ethan wondered if maybe, just maybe, this partnership could work after all. The Wayfarer limped through hyperspace, its engines groaning with each surge forward. Ethan sat in the pilot's seat, running diagnostics on the battered ship. The ambush had left them with minimal shielding and barely functional weapons. Repairs would take time. Time they didn't have if more bounty hunters caught their trail. In the co-pilot's seat, Liara sat silently, her hands folded in her lap. She was staring out at the swirling hyperspace tunnel, but her mind was elsewhere. Ethan could sense the weight of her thoughts even without a psychic bond. Something on your mind? Ethan asked, breaking the silence. Liara hesitated, then turned to face him. The bond. We cannot delay it any longer. Ethan leaned back, folding his arms. You really think it's going to make that much of a difference? I know it will, she said firmly. You saw what happened during the ambush. My abilities are incomplete without the bond. If we're attacked again, I might not be able to protect us. Ethan sighed, running a hand through his hair. Okay, let's say I agree. What exactly does this ritual involve? Do I need to chant in an alien language or drink some glowing liquid? Liara almost smiled at his sarcasm. It is simpler than you think. The bond requires physical proximity, focus, and mutual intent. You must trust me, and I must trust you. Ethan frowned. Physical proximity. How close are we talking? Liara's cheeks flushed a faint violet. Close enough to establish a connection. The bond is... Intimate. Ethan raised an eyebrow. Define intimate. She met his gaze, unflinching. It is not. Carnal, if that is what you fear. But the act of forming the bond will lay bare our emotions, memories, and thoughts. There will be no hiding. The thought unsettled Ethan more than he cared to admit. He had spent years burying his past, his regrets, and his pain. The idea of someone, especially an alien princess, seeing all of that left him feeling exposed. And what happens after this bond? He asked. We will be connected, Liara said. Our trust will be unshakable, our actions coordinated. It will make us stronger. Ethan exhaled slowly. And you're sure this is necessary? Liara's expression softened. Ethan, I know this is a lot to ask, but I cannot do this alone. Please. There was something in her voice, a mix of vulnerability and determination, that struck a chord in him. 
against his better judgment. He nodded. Okay, let's do it. Liara led Ethan to the cargo hold, the largest open space on the ship. She removed her tattered cloak, revealing the elegant yet simple tunic beneath. Despite the scars of hardship etched on her face, there was an undeniable grace to her movements. Sit, she instructed, gesturing to the floor. Ethan followed her lead, sitting cross-legged opposite her. She reached into a small pouch at her waist and retrieved a shimmering crystal. Holding it between her hands, she closed her eyes and began to hum softly. The crystal glowed faintly, casting a gentle light around them. This crystal amplifies the bond, Liara explained, her voice calm. Now focus on your breathing. Clear your mind. Ethan tried, though his thoughts were anything but clear. He could feel the warmth radiating from the crystal, its light pulsing in rhythm with Liara's hum. Slowly, he felt a strange sensation, a tugging at the edges of his consciousness, as if an invisible thread was being woven between them. Liara reached out, placing her hands on his. The contact sent a jolt through him, not unpleasant but startling. Do not resist, she said softly. As the ritual deepened, Ethan's mind opened to a flood of sensations. Images flashed before his eyes, memories of Liara's life. He saw her standing in the grand halls of her palace, her family surrounding her. He felt her pride, her love, and her overwhelming grief as the memories shifted to the fall of her empire. In return, Ethan felt his own memories rising to the surface, unbidden. The battlefield where he had lost his squad. The desperate fight to survive on Earth during the First Contact War. The crushing weight of guilt he carried every day since. When the flood of memories subsided, Ethan realized he was breathing heavily, his heart pounding. Liara's hands were still on his, her expression soft but serious. It is done, she said. Ethan blinked the world around him coming back into focus. That was intense. You'll adjust, Liara said. Do you feel it? The connection? He nodded slowly. There was a new presence in his mind. Not intrusive, but unmistakable. It was as if a part of him was no longer alone. This is going to take some getting used to, Ethan admitted. Liara offered a small smile. It will make us stronger. Together. For the first time, Ethan felt a glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, she was right. The bond between Ethan and Liara was unlike anything he had ever experienced. It wasn't just her presence he felt. It was her emotions, faint but undeniable, like whispers brushing against his mind. As the hours passed, the connection deepened. At times, it was overwhelming. At others, it was oddly comforting. In the cockpit, Ethan adjusted their course toward a render a rumored sanctuary planet where allies of Liara's royal family might still exist. Liara sat beside him, her gaze fixed on the navigation screen, though her mind was clearly elsewhere. How are you holding up? Ethan asked, breaking the silence. Liara glanced at him, her violet eyes reflecting a mix of weariness and determination. I feel lighter, she admitted. The bond has eased some of my burdens. Ethan smirked. Glad I could help. It is more than that, she said, her tone softening. For the first time in months, I do not feel alone. The admission caught Ethan off guard. He had seen glimpses of her isolation during the ritual, moments of heartbreak and loss that mirrored his own. Yeah, he said quietly. I get that. For a while, neither of them spoke. The hum of the ship filled the space between them a steady rhythm that seemed to echo their unspoken thoughts. As the days passed, Ethan and Liara found themselves learning the nuances of their connection. It wasn't just about sensing each other's emotions. It was about understanding them. During a routine maintenance check, Ethan accidentally dropped a wrench, and a surge of irritation rippled through the bond. Liara, who was sitting nearby, looked up with a smirk. Frustrated, are we? Ethan rolled his eyes. You don't have to comment on everything you feel, you know. I find it fascinating, Liara replied, her tone playful. Humans are so. Ispressive. Even your annoyance is layers. Glad I can keep you entertained, Ethan muttered. 
though he couldn't hide the hint of a smile. Later, while Liara was meditating in her quarters, Ethan felt a wave of sadness wash over him. It wasn't his own, it was hers. He hesitated before knocking on her door. Come in, Liara said, her voice steady despite the emotion he could feel emanating from her. Ethan stepped inside, leaning against the doorframe. You okay? She looked up at him, her expression guarded but her eyes betraying her vulnerability. I was remembering my family, she said softly. The bond makes it harder to suppress those memories. Ethan nodded, stepping closer. You don't have to suppress them. Sometimes. It helps to talk about it. Liara hesitated, then began to speak. She told him about her parents, her siblings, and the life she had lost. As she spoke, Ethan listened, offering quiet reassurances when her voice faltered. By the time she finished, there was a sense of calm between them, a shared understanding that strengthened their connection. The bond also brought moments of unexpected closeness. During a rare quiet evening, Ethan taught Liara how to play an old human card game. She struggled with the rules at first, but her competitive nature quickly emerged. You cheated, she accused after losing her third round. Ethan laughed. I did not cheat. You're just bad at bluffing. Liara narrowed her eyes. Perhaps the Alvarian games are more sophisticated than this. Maybe, Ethan said, shuffling the deck. But I bet they're not as fun. Liara tried to hide her smile, but the bond betrayed her amusement. For the first time since they met, Ethan saw her laugh, a genuine, unguarded moment that made her seem less like a displaced princess and more like a person. That night, as Ethan lay in his bunk, he couldn't shake the feeling of her laughter. It echoed in his mind, mingling with his own thoughts. The bond had done more than link their minds. It had started to blur the lines between their lives. The growing closeness between Ethan and Liara was interrupted by the sharp beep of the ship's proximity alarm. Ethan bolted upright, rushing to the cockpit. Liara was already there, her expression tense. What is it? She asked. Ethan scanned the console. Distress signal. It's weak, but it's nearby. Liara frowned. Could it be a trap? Could be, Ethan said. But if it's not, someone's in trouble. Liara hesitated. We cannot afford another confrontation. Ethan glanced at her, his jaw tightening. And if we ignore it, what kind of people does that make us? The question hung in the air, and Liara felt the weight of his resolve through the bond. She nodded reluctantly. Do what you must. As the wayfarer adjusted course toward the signal, both Ethan and Liara braced themselves for whatever lay ahead. Their bond had brought them closer, but the galaxy was still a dangerous place, and their greatest challenges were yet to come. The faint distress signal grew stronger as the wayfarer approached its source. Ethan's hands tightened on the ship's controls, his instincts honed from years of danger screaming at him to stay cautious. Beside him, Liara sat stiffly, her expression a mix of concern and unease. It's coming from a derelict freighter, Ethan said, pointing to the screen. The ship's outline flickered on the radar, a massive vessel drifting aimlessly in the void. No life signs, but that doesn't mean it's empty. Liara leaned closer to the console. Falvarian design, she noted. An older model likely used for long-haul transport. Bounty hunters don't usually fly those, Ethan said. Might be worth checking out. Could be supplies. Could be trouble. Or both, Liara said quietly. Ethan smirked. Wouldn't be the first time. Docking with the freighter was straightforward, though the eerie silence that greeted them upon boarding was anything but comforting. The ship's corridors were dimly lit, the emergency lights casting long shadows across walls streaked with scorch marks. Signs of a firefight were everywhere, blaster holes, scattered debris, and the occasional bloodstain. This place gives me the creeps, Ethan muttered, his hand resting on the grip of his plasma pistol. Liara followed closely, her own weapon drawn. Stay alert, she said. The signal came from the bridge. If there's anyone, or anything, left here, that's where they'll be. As they advanced, Ethan felt the bond hum faintly in the back of his mind. Liara's tension mirrored his own, 
the connection heightening their awareness of each other's emotions. It was strange, but also oddly reassuring. They reached the bridge without incident. The doors groaned open, revealing a scene of chaos. Consoles flickered with dying power, and the air smelled of burnt circuits. In the center of the room was the source of the distress signal, a small, automated beacon emitting a pulsing blue light. Looks like the crew didn't make it, Ethan said, stepping closer to the beacon. Liara approached the captain's chair, where a data pad lay discarded. She picked it up, her eyes scanning the screen. There's a log here, she said. The ship was carrying refugees, Thalvarians fleeing the fall of our empire. Ethan frowned. What happened to them? Liara's expression darkened. Pirates. They boarded the freighter, took what they wanted, and left the rest to die. Ethan swore under his breath. Figures. We should grab what we can and get out of here before they come back. Just as they turned to leave, the ship shuddered violently. Alarms blared and the lights flickered ominously. What the hell? Ethan shouted, grabbing onto the nearest console. Liara's eyes widened. We're being pulled out of the freighter by force. Ethan sprinted to the viewport, his stomach sinking as a massive pirate ship came into view. Its jagged hull and bristling weapons left no doubt about its intentions. They were waiting for us, Liara said, her voice laced with frustration. The beacon was a trap. Of course it was, Ethan muttered, rushing to the comm panel. Wayfarer, do you copy? Initiate emergency undocking sequence. The freighter groaned as the Wayfarer's automated systems disengaged the docking clamps, but the pirates weren't about to let them go without a fight. The freighter's external cameras showed a squad of pirate vessels closing in. We're outgunned, Liara said, gripping her weapon tightly. What do we do? Ethan's mind raced. We don't have the firepower to take them head on, but this freighter might still have some tricks left. Ethan sprinted to the engineering console, scanning the freighter's systems. Most were offline, but one subsystem caught his attention, an auxiliary reactor tied to the ship's thrusters. If we overload the reactor, it'll create a massive explosion, Ethan said. Enough to take out the pirates. And us, Liara pointed out. Not if we time it right, Ethan said, his fingers flying over the controls. We set the reactor to blow and ride the shockwave out of here. Liara hesitated, then nodded. I trust you. Ethan felt the sincerity of her words through the bond, and it steeled his resolve. He activated the reactor's overload sequence, the console flashing a countdown two minutes. We've got two minutes to get back to the Wayfair, he said. Let's move. The journey back to their ship was chaotic. The freighter systems began to fail under the strain of the reactor overload, sparks flying from exposed wires and the floor trembling beneath their feet. Behind them, the pirates had boarded, their shouts echoing through the corridors. Ethan and Liara fought their way through, their movements eerily synchronized thanks to the bond. Liara's psychic senses allowed her to anticipate their enemy's actions, while Ethan's combat experience turned those insights into deadly precision. They reached the Wayfarer with seconds to spare. As the freighter's reactor hit critical mass, Ethan launched the ship into hyperspace, the explosion propelling them forward just as the countdown hit zero. In the safety of hyperspace, Ethan slumped into his seat, his breathing heavy. Liara sat beside him, her expression a mix of relief and exhaustion. That was reckless, she said though there was no anger in her voice. You're welcome, Ethan replied with a grin. Liara shook her head, but a small smile tugged at her lips. You continue to surprise me, Ethan Hayes. Stick around, he said. I've got plenty more surprises. As the bond between them hummed faintly in the background, Ethan felt a strange sense of peace. They had survived another day, and for now, that was enough. The hum of hyperspace filled the Wayfair, a steady backdrop to the silence between Ethan and Liara. The cabin's tension felt softer now, less burdened by fear, and more weighted with unspoken thoughts. The events of the past hours had left them both introspective. Ethan sat at the ship's console, running diagnostics.
The freighter's explosion and the harrowing escape had taken a toll on the wayfarer, but most systems were holding steady. He glanced at Liara, who stood by the viewport, her gaze fixed on the swirling stars of hyperspace. You've been quiet, Ethan said, breaking the silence. Liara turned, her violet eyes meeting his. I've been reflecting. On what? Ethan asked, leaning back in his chair. On the bond, she said softly. And what it has revealed about us. Ethan straightened, wary but intrigued. What do you mean? Liara moved to sit across from him, her posture as poised as ever, but her expression vulnerable. The bond has shown me more than I expected. Not just about you, but about myself, about what I've lost, and what I still hope to find. Her words lingered in the air, and Ethan felt the faint pull of her emotions through the bond. There was sadness, yes, but also a quiet strength that mirrored his own. You've seen my past, Ethan said, his voice quieter now. You know I've made mistakes. I'm not exactly the kind of guy you should be counting on. Liara tilted her head, studying him. And yet you saved me. You fought for me when you had no reason to. That is more than I could have asked for. Ethan exhaled heavily, running a hand through his hair. I'm just trying to do the right thing. Doesn't mean I'm good at it. Through the bond, Liara felt his guilt, his doubt, and the weight of his past. She reached out, placing a hand on his. Ethan, your actions speak louder than your regrets. You've shown me courage, loyalty, and kindness. That is what matters. He looked at her startled by the sincerity in her voice. You don't even know me. I know enough, she said simply. Ethan held her gaze, the bond between them humming faintly in the background. For the first time, he felt something shift, not just trust, but understanding. They were both survivors, scarred by their pasts yet unwilling to give up. Later that evening, Ethan and Liara shared a meal in the galley. It was a simple affair ration bars and water, but the atmosphere felt lighter. Liara even managed a small smile when Ethan joked about her earlier distaste for human food. You know, he said, leaning back in his chair, for someone who calls humans unsophisticated, you've adapted pretty well to our way of life. Liara arched an elegant brow. Survival often requires adaptation. Besides, there are aspects of your culture I find endearing. Like what? Ethan asked, genuinely curious. She hesitated, then said, Your resilience. Your ability to find humor, even in the direst circumstances. It is admirable. Ethan grinned. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. It is, she said softly, her smile fading into something more thoughtful. You remind me that even in darkness, there is light. The warmth in her words caught Ethan off guard, and for a moment, he didn't know how to respond. Instead, he raised his water bottle. To survival. Liara mirrored the gesture. To survival. As the evening wound down, Ethan walked Liara to her quarters. The bond between them felt stronger now, more balanced. They had come a long way from the initial distrust and wariness that had defined their relationship. At her door, Liara hesitated. Ethan, she said, turning to face him. I know this has not been easy for you, for either of us, but I want you to know. I trust you. Her words, spoken with such quiet conviction, left Ethan momentarily speechless. Finally, he nodded. I trust you too. Liara inclined her head, her expression soft. Rest well, Ethan. Tomorrow, we continue forward, together. He watched as she stepped inside and the door slid shut. For the first time since meeting her, he felt a sense of clarity. The bond was no longer just a means of survival. It was a partnership, one forged in trust and strengthened by shared trials. As Ethan returned to his own quarters, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning. Together, they had faced death and come out stronger. Whatever lay ahead, he was ready to face it, with Liara by his side.